Using Secure Shell, or SSH, is an important part of securing your server, particularly for safeguarding against passwords and username attacks. What this video focuses on is the configuration of Secure Shell server access around the algorithms and keys in order to avoid weak keys being broken or used as a point of attack against your service. Since the algorithm that's used defines the security of your secure shell, we look at making sure that we use the most current and secure algorithms that are out there. Now in order to secure your shell, the first thing you're going to need to do is see what you have. So I'm going to quickly test and see what options are available in terms of the actual responses. This tells me what types of keys are available. So from the responses, we can see what type of ciphers are available and potentially what weaknesses might be had. So what we're going to do is show you how to change those ciphers in order to prevent such attacks. Now, I'm not going to change it to something that is brilliantly secure because these standards change over time. So we're going to look primarily at how this is changed so that you can do it again for yourself later. So I'm logging quickly into my remote server, which in this case happens to be sitting under my desk. And I'm going to modify the secure shell on that server in order to tell it what crypto keys and ciphers I want to use. Now it's a relatively straightforward and easy process to simply edit the configuration of your um, secure shell server. So we're going to go ahead and modify the existing one on the fly here. Seems I didn't close it down earlier. So we're just going to scroll to the end of the configuration and then quickly add the ciphers that we want to use rather than use a denial process of blacking out the ones that we don't want to use. So I'm just going to quickly paste in the few extra lines here showing what the default configuration is and what ciphers I'm going to use. Now, most of you are probably going to be jumping off your seats right now telling me the, but those are not the best secure ones. And yes, you're totally right. Those are not the most secure ones, but I'm emphasizing a point and showing you that how it gets a response, not making it super, super secure right now. That part you can do yourself over time because obviously keys will change and security standards also. So at this point, I'm going for only demonstrating that I can make it use those keys and ciphers rather than just changing it automatically to the most current one, because then it will be out of date when this video gets older. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and restart the secure shell server in order to make sure the configuration is the most current. And then I'm going to do the same as I did earlier, which is basically prompt it for checking against a key which I happen to know doesn't exist, but I'll still get the response for which ones are there. As we can see, I get the response from the keys that basically I set up the cryptographic ciphers. So I can connect and I now have that. Now, some of you might be turning around and saying, ah, but you haven't configured your client to not use those other keys if they're there. And to that, I'm going to say, well, you know what? A key who opens many locks is a good key but a lock that opens for many keys is a very bad lock. So in this case, I'd rather secure the server and not worry about the client. But that aside, we're going to focus on another section. As luck would have it, there happens to be a tool out there for checking whether you have a good setup or not for your SSH server. So as you can see, I've gone done a quick test against mine. This happens to be a different one than what I did earlier, but anyway, um, what you'll get from that is the warnings and the outright, please remove these keys. So in this case, I've already modified the file. I just simply haven't um, restarted the SSH server. So I'm going to restart the SSH and then do the audit again to show you the difference between the yellow and red Christmas tree effect that I've got at the moment versus how it would look if I had set it up correctly. And again, can't emphasize enough, security standards change over time, so don't use this as a default absolute must-have 
use your own as they are current at the time. And as you can see, I now have a nice green report. Links to the tool, in this case the audit one on GitHub, I will provide in the video. Please go ahead and use it in your environments. It's completely free. This draws our video to a close, and if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, please give us feedback in the comments. We try to do our best.